Hey everyone, you're about ready to hear a story of hope and perseverance and beating chronic infection and fungus and all the life lessons that goes along with it. I can't wait for you to meet Sally and hear her story in studio with me, Dr. Jason West, and it's starting right now. Hey everyone, it's the Dr. Jason West Live at Five. Although we ran into a little bit of a technical difficulty, we have had to modify and adapt, and guess what, that's what we did. And so now we're getting ready to share a neat story from one of my favorite people. I'm so excited Sally decided to come on line with us and to talk about her story because what is really neat about sharing these stories is you're not the only one. So many times people will look at it and they'll say, well, you know, Sally beat her disease and George beat his disease and so-and-so beat arthritis and someone else beat, had macular degeneration. But then they say, well, what about me? And so I wanted to share with you real stories of hope and the people that have amazing outcomes. And so Sally graciously said, I'll come share my story. Sally, welcome. Thank you. All I'm right. honored. <laughs> so Sally, walk us back through time of what happened with your health? Where did it start? How did you run into the office? Boy, it seems like a long journey right now. It seems like we've been doing this a long time and we have. Um, I think I've I, through a friend, I found the West Clinic in 2016, okay? okay? But I wanna back up just a little bit before that. Um, probably in the 80s, I started getting migraines, okay? okay? And um, back in 2018, you, the only thing that we had available to us was a shot that you would give yourself in your thigh. Um, now this is while work's going on, because I worked full time, I was a single mother, and um, you know I would take a break and go to the restroom and basically take a shot, wait a few minutes to try to get back on my feet and then go back and finish work. Um, and how and, often were you doing this? It was this like oh, this is, once a month, once a quarter, once a week? This is probably a couple of times a week. Okay. At, at the worst part, it was probably a couple of times a week. Um, and so that's back in, you know, that's back in the 80s. As I progress, it feels like the frog that's in the water, you know, where the water, the, the temperature gets turned up just a little bit and you don't know that the water is boiling. Um, so then move, move quickly ahead. Um, I got married at 68 years old for the third time and um, to a wonderful man by the name of Joe and I moved into his house in 2013, the end of 2013, November. And, um, as it, and I had retired at that point. So we were in the home and as it would be, Joe got dementia. He was a type one diabetic and he got dementia. And about maybe two years after we were married, I started getting a lot of pain in my body a lot of joint pain. Um, it felt like a really bad flu. I couldn't, I couldn't get over it. I was, before I moved in, I had been working full time again, and I was making really stupid mistakes, things that I wouldn't normally make mistakes on. So I knew that that was part of what was happening. In addition to the foggy brain and the, the uh, pain all over, and people would say, you look like you feel great, which makes you crazy because you don't feel great. You're, you just, I just kept pushing through it, thinking it's going to get better, and, um, and I don't need to kind of give up, at least what my opinion of giving up was, which was to ignore what was going on and to keep working, keep, keep moving ahead. So in 2016, I couldn't do that anymore. Um, I was sleeping all the time, um, in pain all the time. Um, the primary care that I was going to at the time tested me for Lyme, it came back positive, and it took a while to even to even verify that it was Lyme. And do you remember what type of test it was? Because there's a bunch of tests. There's there Western are. Western Blot, there's ELISA, there's PCR. I think it was the first one. What, what, the Western Blot. Western one. Block. It was Western Block. But even that took a while to just, yeah. you know, because this was back in, this would have been like back in 2015, 16, okay? okay? So, um, so it comes back positive. Um, and my primary care is sure that I've got Lyme, but, but there was, she didn't know what to do. Basically, she just, she said, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. And I had, before this, I had been working with a friend of mine that um, 
her daughter became a nutritionist. So she was out learning the trade of what's being as nutritional as she could be so she could help other people. And I called her and I said, I've started doing some research on Lyme and I think the only real help that I can get is probably through um, doctors on the East Coast that give um, antibiotics. I don't want that. I don't want two years of having to go through that. So she called the people that she had been learning through school and they said, if, you're, if you've got Lyme and you need to get treated, you need to go to the West Clinic, which is what I did. Now, and you're in Oregon. Oregon to Pocatello is 12, 14 hours? Uh, just about, yeah. Okay. I, uh, yeah. Some of the time we drove, but most of the time we flew. Okay. Okay. And so you, you, and by the way, everyone, like Lyme disease is the great imitator. You know, you put 40 people in the room and someone's going to have a heart problem. Someone's going to have a hormone imbalance. Someone's going to have headaches. Someone's going to have joint pain. Someone's going to not be able to sleep. Like it's so difficult to diagnose off of symptoms. And so then what happens is a lot of times, and, and I'm just really proud of your family um, doctor because most people won't even think outside the box, especially on the West Coast. Like it's, it's not so uncommon to have a diagnosis from someone coming from East, but hats off to your to provider for running a Western blot test and then saying, well, uh, you know, it's probably not just an antibiotic deficiency disease, which is kind of the statement that I say in the office all the time. And you, you find us or you, your niece tells us about us and you come over and what happens when you come to the office? Kind of walk us through the first interaction and the first thing when you walk in the door, what happens? You know, even prior to walking the door, let me, let me, I, I researched some um, clinics that were near me in, um, I live in Ashland, Oregon, and in Medford, Oregon, there were a couple of clinics, and I called them, and what I got back over the phone was, this is how much it's going to cost. There wasn't a lot of empathy, there wasn't a lot of, um, let me tell you what we, what we do in this office to help you, and then I called the West Clinic, and it was completely different. You know, I said, I don't know if you've got room for me. She said, you come. If you need us, we're here. And that's, that's the way I've been treated ever since I walked in the door, uh, 2016. You know, they've just been, when, when I needed you, you were there. So and they all said- All the staff, it's been wonderful. They said, you could just come. So you come, yep. and, and I think the first, you came with Joe. Yes, I did. Okay. Yep. So you, you come to the office and you walk in and just kind of walk us through like the, cause, cause we do the office a little differently and I want people to hear this because one of the barriers to healing is when you don't mesh with your healthcare provider, right? And so we've really tried to create, okay, this is what, what you should mesh with your provider. So I think, was it Jody that talked to you on the phone or, or who yeah, was Yeah, Jody it? talked to me at the time, um, but, it, but even, I can't remember who was at the front desk at the time that I first came in but it was like she had known me her whole life and everybody that I met in the clinic and have since then, because I've been coming for six years, um, it, it, everybody treated me as though they knew me, they cared about me, um, and I felt hope for the first time. You know, you, you talk a lot about that too. I just felt hope that I was in the right place. Um, yeah. So, so Sally, we have the diagnosis, we do the workup, and then we do something different from other clinics. We do the the research project with a medical microscopy and you see your blood and what do you see? It was fascinating. I try, tried to tell people once I went home about it. Um, you could show me where the little, where the Lyme was infecting the cells and you can actually see that. Um, it was fascinating to me. You know, it's one thing, a lot of this for me has been about, I'm, I'm not a scientist. That's not, that's not my background. So, so all of it was magic to me. You know, it wasn't based on theory that I had. It mm -hmm. was just based on what you all knew from generations of being able to do this work. Um, yeah, it was just, and everything that I told you, all of my symptoms, you said, we can help you. We can do this with you. Well, and I really believe that because, the, and the reason why is because when we line up the body, amazing things happen. You know, when we put, give the right nutrients and then we start reprogramming the nerves and then we're trying to stimulate the immune system. And so we start in that treatment pathway and just curious, what, do you remember what treatments we did? I, the one that I remember the most, of course, is the IV because uh -huh. that's the most impressive, you know, that you're putting in 
hydrogen peroxide <laughs> into your well, into Well, just your so body everybody knows, it. it's dilute hydrogen peroxide. Yes. It's one to 100 dilution. So one cc of hydrogen peroxide to 100 cc's of saline. But that is one of my very favorite treatments. Yeah, and, and, and it works. I mean, it's, yeah, I just, it works. And all the vitamins and minerals, um, you know, I hadn't been taking care of myself because for me, it was about survival. Right. It was about, I've just got to stay on my feet. And um, so Sally, what are some of the coping mechanisms that you did for survival? Like a lot of times people will be like, look, I don't want to drink caffeine, but I drink caffeine or I need an energy drink or I need sugar just to function. So when you say it, I'm just trying to survive over there in Oregon, what, what were some of the things that you were doing just to get by? Well, I, I'm a lifelong sugar addict, well, you know, we so I, you know, I, I, I eat sugar, but I also, you know, every afternoon it was caffeine. And even when I was working, you know, two or three o'clock in the afternoon, I'd have to have something, I'd have to have caffeine. Um, and, and that was just part of my routine. And, and not, you know, I think not what I thought was giving in to the way I was feeling. I felt somehow that I needed to stand up no matter how good or how bad I felt. Mm -hmm. And um, you, the, the West Clinic gave me permission to be sick, but not to make that who I was to not identify myself with the Lyme. And, and I had never heard those words before. Because I didn't, at this point, I didn't want my life in the future to be all about this disease. So the first time I came in, it was for two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and you treated me, you know, 10 days straight. And then we, my husband and I got back on a plane and went back to Oregon. So that's a good stopping off spot. Two comments on that, one. I try really hard to tell people, look, it's Sally, it's not Lyme disease. You know, you're not your diagnosis. I understand what's going on, but we gotta treat the person in there, not the disease. Then we do the infusion treatments, we do the neural therapy, we put together a nutritional program for you, you're in the office for, and then you go back, you fly home, and what happens when you get home? Well, for me, I mean, I'm sure that all of your patients are different in the, in the way that the treatment itself affects you. But it took me at my age a while to kind of get back up again. Um, the treatment itself takes a lot of energy. Um, and I was tired a lot. I was sleeping a lot, which I, you know, which is just part of it. Um, and so when I went home, I did a lot of sleeping. Which by the way, everyone, this is part of the healing process. Um, I've had this discussions with lots of people. When we start dumping in all of these building blocks, and, and I tell people, it's like there's a, a construction crew waiting for someone to build a house. And they're just like, okay, where is everything? And then the lumber truck shows up and we start dropping off two by fours and plywood and sheetrock. Everybody starts with, you know, with, with building and it takes energy to do that. And then by the way, as you're building things, you know, you're cutting off boards and you're having scrap lumbar. And then what happens is people have to take that lumber out to the trash. And all of that stuff takes energy. So we're dumping stuff in and sometimes people are like, why am I so tired? I'm like, well, you finally can go to work. You finally can heal. That's right. So you're That's home, you're like, all right, uh, man, I got uh, hit by a truck as far as like, I'm just trying to get my energy back. And then what happens? Well, I continue to come back to the clinic um, probably about three times a year. Yeah, all about right? every four months or so. something like that. And in the middle of this, my primary care back in Oregon says, it's, I don't think it's just Lyme. I think you've also got mold. Okay. So we go and get tested for mold. And at one of, I don't even remember what, what the, the variant was, but the, the range for that mold was somewhere between zero and 2,000 units. And when the test came back, I was at 6,000 units with just this one mold, because there were three or four different moles that had come up. So that's and only identified. like 3,000, or excuse me, 300% normal. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. And at the time, after I came back after that mold treatment with you all, um, then I we also had the house tested. There was mold in the, in the the down in the basement. And okay. was that from like an old water thing? Did, did some flooding happen there, or was there not right plumbing in the wall? What, where did you find the mold? You know, the house that, that um, Joe and I lived in uh, was built in 1908. And this was from a refrigerator leak that happened and then went down into the basement and the mold grew. Um, so they came in, they cleaned out everything in the, in the basement that was affected, signed off on it, okay? And this was, this was about um, probably 2018, something like that. 
Um, and then um, Joe got diagnosed with dementia. And it was the last trip that I took to the clinic before this one, mm -hmm. Joe did not come with me. Um, but we thought we had gotten the mold. You know, I was back at the clinic. Things seemed to be working pretty good. Well, Sally, and by that time, just so everybody's listening, like when you came back with a diagnosis of mold and say, I've got mold in my house, I'm really curious, what did we tell you about that? Do you remember? You know, I don't. Well, and the reason that everyone <laughs> why I say this is because nothing really should have changed. And the reason I say that is because if you come in and you say, I've got mold, or I've got Lyme disease, or I've got shingles, or I got Epstein Barr, or I've got staph, yeah. the whole answer is, okay, well, let's make you healthy. Like, we gotta build up your immune system because it's not the disease that's important. Yeah. It's the person. And, and, if you, and that's why we say in the office all the time, you're not your diagnosis. You're not your diagnosis. Like, it's important to be aware, but it's not your diagnosis because what too many times happens in medicine is we get caught up in chasing the bug. Oh, well, you got Lyme disease, so let's just give you antibiotics, and they don't ever work on the body. Or you've got staph infection, so let's start giving you these different antibiotics. Or you've got whatever it is, and it's kind of like, well, what, what is the prescription that lines up with the disease? But that's not what we do. The, and so the, you don't remember, but I know what I would have told you, which is, okay, yeah, let's keep going. Like, let's build your body up. Let's make you healthy. Well, and, you know, even though I had some um, alternative medical advice before I came to, to the West Clinic, most of my growing up years had been with traditional medicine. Right. And so that was my mindset. And it, it started shifting when I came to the West Clinic. It started shifting about, wait a minute, it's... It, this is not oriented toward a pill. And I started feeling better. And, and Sally, going from kind of a traditional mindset to coming in and having us say, look, it's not the bug, which is such a huge deviation because everybody in medicine is like, look, no, the bug causes the disease and it's not. It's the environment causing the disease. Like it's something in your system that's imbalanced or your immune system just can't keep up. And when we stimulate that, and this is what is so fun about taking care of people. Mm -hmm. When we get that happening and your immune system turns on, it can kill mold, it can kill Lyme, it can kill staph, it can kill viruses, it can kill parasites or fungus or, or amoebas or whatever's in there. Like, it's the body. You gotta treat the body. Well, and all of that was like a miracle to me, especially at the last, the last time um, before this visit. Um, you know, you would, you would test my blood and I'd look at it and it was completely different than the way it was when I first started, completely different. So then I'm, go I'm, I'm away from the clinic for two years. Joe's got dementia. Um, and after Joe died, I started, I'm sure that a lot of it was stress, but well, for I, sure. like all of, you know, all of that, all those symptoms started coming back. And, um, and at the time, my, my doctor said to me, are you sure you got the mold out of the house? Well, we tested it again, and it was in the attic. They didn't find it all. Mm -hmm. So, so, and you, you all already knew that. So now I'm able to come back to the clinic, get treated. Um, I'm already feeling better. And this, this is day four. I'll have one more day of IV, and then I'll drive back to Boise um, and eventually go home. So it's just been, it's been re-education for me. And, and... You know, part of what, at least I was, what I noticed and what I was up against was people mean well, but when you say you've got Lyme or mold, I don't know if they don't believe you, but what, in the beginning with the Lyme, I heard, well, we don't have that in Oregon. And I thought at the time, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. What do you mean that, oh, they stop at the, at the California border. Well, yeah, they have that's really ridiculous. good. ridiculous. We have really good border control in Absolutely. Oregon. Absolutely, yeah. Like, there's no ticks there. Absolutely. There's no bugs. There's nothing that can bite you. No, anymore. and then I hear, well, you can't, you can't have mold in your body. So it's like, it's like, for me at least, it made me stronger. It made me know, wait a minute, I know what I know. Right, and this is you know? so important. And, so, and this is why I wanted her to tell people and hear their story because when you start living up and lining up for you, like when you have the ability to trust yourself and say, look, I know that this mold is affecting me or I have this and you take ownership. And, and that doesn't mean that you become your disease. It just says, look, just because the doctor, and I even say this about me, I don't know everything, but just because the doctor tells you something, it may not be true, right? That's I right. Mean, That's exactly a, right. So 
for people that are listening and watching this, like there's some huge life lessons. We talked about it a little bit before we started. There's some big life lessons that like you have discovered. And I think they're really powerful. So if someone's out there and they have whatever condition it is, what are some of the lessons that you've learned that you wish you would have known in 14 or 15 when you got this and that you, that you could put your arms around and say, wow, this is a big lesson for me. I think, I think, um, I think knowing yourself and knowing that nobody else can, um, nobody else can make those decisions for ourselves, but us. And sometimes that means doing things that are a little, um, skewed to the general public because they want to tell you, no, you should be doing this or that. But it's standing up and saying, no, I trust myself. I know that this is the right path for me to do. Um, and I've always been the kind of person that when life shows up, I pay attention. You know, it's not, it, it, how do you deal with life as it shows up when it's there? And that's, that's a, an invaluable lesson for me. I've always felt like if you don't, if you don't own it yourself, then somebody else is going to own it and they won't, you know, it, it may not be best for me. Okay. Um, what about um, like some of the rules of health that you've discovered? Because, you know, we talked about you don't feel very good. A lot of people will go to a crutch, which is chocolate or which is sugar or caffeine. And you said, when I was working, I had half, you know, some afternoon caffeine. But one of the big things that we talk to people about the office is like, we just want you to eat, you know, healthy and alive food as possible. We want to get more water in your system. We want to get the right things based upon the blood tests but it's also a personal commitment to do that. And, and there's part of the, like a huge part of this is you saying, wait a minute, I'm gonna take ownership. So what did you take ownership And of? be responsible about that. You know, well, I gave up a lot of the sugar. Okay. I gave up, like the first time that I was here, you showed me with the sugar as far as the soft drinks, I completely gave all of that stuff up. I have limited my dairy um, so that I'm not eating as much ice cream which was a, a real a drawback for me, where it wasn't good for me. Um, I'm not having to have caffeine in the afternoon like I was. Um, so all of that, you know, and, and I'm, not as, I'm not as diligent about exercise, um, and I keep working at it. I just keep working at it, so. Okay, so we have movement, we've got responsibility, you're cutting down sugar. What about some of the emotional stuff that, that uh, is a discovery for everybody. Like, did you start meditating or journaling or talking to yourself? Like, what did you do for a, a stress relief? Because it's different for everybody, but do you have one? Um, I belong to a spiritual group. Um, and it's a, it's a, there's about eight of us that we meet. Now we're meeting once a month with COVID. We mm -hmm. weren't able to meet just as often as we were. And, and basically that has taught me about trusting something beyond me uh -huh. whatever that's whatever the word is that we use for that individually whether it's spirit whatever it is because spirit does a much better job than sally does sally doesn't always make the right decisions but if i pay attention and um and follow what i'm seeing it it, it works for me it just works for me and giving up about you know feeling like there's control um i want to take control of my own life but there are things that that I won't make as good a decision as spirit will. Okay, and what about um, any other takeaway, valuable lessons that you know now that that may be important to for other people to know about? Like, is there an aha? All of it's good. Like you're, you're trusting yourself, your spiritual group. Anything else? You know, I think that as as I've gotten older, um, it's it's not only the toxins that I've ingested, but the toxins that I have invited into my life that I don't invite in anymore. I don't want drama. You know, I call, I, I think of it as a string. I don't want to pull on the drama string anymore. Um, life is too precious to do that. I don't want to spend my time doing that. I've got, I've got great family. Everybody is great in the family. I've got a terrific friend who, who I can talk to. And, and doesn't minimize what I bring. Um, and that's important to me. I don't wanna be, I, I don't want that in my life anymore. And I think that takes a conscious, because to let go of people um, or, or, you know, whatever, you, whatever the, you've been doing, to give that up 
sometimes is hard. Um, you know, you love, I love people and I, I don't want to necessarily give them up, but I've done that because I think it's important in my life for the quality of my life. So. Yeah, Sally, I just think that's fantastic. Don't pull on the drama string. Like I'm going to incorporate that into m not only my life, but when I talk to people, like just don't pull the string. I've got another one for you, okay. which, which happened a few years ago. Um, th the situation is, doesn't matter, but basically it's don't get in the boat. If you know that there are people or activities in the boat that you can't agree with, just don't get in the boat. Oh, I Let the it. boat go by. Wait for the next one. <laughs> I just wait for the next boat to come right. around. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. Don't pull the string, don't get in the boat. Like, Absolutely. Love because you know your body's here and your mind's here, they go like this, and standing up for yourself physically and saying, look, this is what aligns for me. You know, my doctor is telling me this, maybe, that really resonates with me and maybe it doesn't and having the courage to like search out what is right for you. Don't pull the drama strings. Um, and then again, like just being you, like I, when I saw Sally this week, I was so excited. It's like one of my friends that I hadn't seen in a long time. Like I was, Thank you. Yeah, me it, was, too. it was just me fun to, to see that. And I love the story. Um, if anybody is in having those kind of, unusual conditions it's a round peg that they're trying to put into a square hole and and i tell people look whether it's me or it's a doctor like me you've got to find them somewhere because there's always hope and, and that's the one of the biggest things in the office you're not your diagnosis mm -hmm. and there's always hope because if you have hope then you can get help yes you can and you and you find the energy right. with the hope the hope triggers all of that so a, absolutely and coming back after i had been gone for two years from you all because yeah. i couldn't come back and now I can, so I can come back every three to four months and, um, and live the life that I'm supposed to live for as long as that's supposed to be. Right, we had that discussion too. Like yeah. we just want, for whatever time all of us have left, it's about living and not surviving. Yes, exactly. Live, not survive. So With everyone, joy, <laughs> with joy, right? So, so Sally came in the office five, six years ago with some complicated uh, medical procedures and when we saw her, the reason why our team was so happy to see her is because when you balance people and we start like, let's work on your energy pathways, your biochemistry, your nervous system pathways, like these are the outcomes that we can expect. It's not, it, it's not a Hail Mary, May, Hail Mary medical miracle. Like this is, oh, well, we're gonna do this and we're gonna help and we're gonna change. And, and then what happens, just this is my dad's prophecy happening all over again. He said, Jason, when you start working in practice and you start living your healthcare provider purpose, you're going to find um, people that you resonate with and you develop these uh, friendships that are just really deep. And like, this is, right. this is one That's thing it. that I haven't seen her for a long time. And it was like, oh. I saw you last month. It was wonderful. Yeah. yeah, it was wonderful. And so, um, everybody remember this, you're not your diagnosis. There's a person in there. And if you balance the body and you, you live true to yourself, like you can beat these things. It's possible. It's happening. We're so grateful for Sally to come on the show. Um, that's our segment for this, uh, for the show. You're not your diagnosis. You can beat it. This is Dr. West and Sally signing out. See you later. Bye. Everything. Thanks for watching the story. Uh, Sally's just a motivation and inspiring. If you would like information of how to beat your chronic disease, just go to the westcliniconline.com. We are there to help you. This is Dr. Jason West. I'll see you guys on the next amazing video.